We pray that we not be conformed to this world, but we be transformed as we renew our mind with your word. For this is good and acceptable and perfect will of God, and we thank you, Father, for this day. And as we commit the works of this day to you, we pray that you will establish our thoughts and make our thoughts agreeable with your thoughts, make our ways agreeable with your ways. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or whatever time you are in your neck of the woods. This is Australia, Sydney, Australia, and my name is Reverend Brian Richards. In a moment, you'll hear from my son uh, reading one of my books, and my lovely lady, Ernanette Richards, will give us another song of worship, who sings better than me, <laughs> and... Uh, uh, and some glad tidings for the day. So, I'll just put this over here. Okay, so, uh, I come on and uh, uh, have a little bit of a worship with the three chords that I know on the guitar, and uh, it's amazing what you could do under the inspiration, the anointing of God. And uh, so, we are the Word of Faith Ministries, registered in Australia as a, as a ministry and a charity, and we help those people who uh, have not got what we got, and that is food on the table every day, and a, a roof over your head, and if you've got a three-bedroom house, then you are a millionaire in the, in the eyes of the the rest of the world. In Sydney, Australia is one of the uh, most expensive places to live in the world and uh, it's getting, at the moment, it's getting a, a real upheaval of uh, uh, financial pressures, the banks are raising interest rates and um, they're not sure if they're going to go through a, a, a recession, you know, some say yes, some say no. But if things stay the way, steady, the way they are, some people are predicting a boom in the housing industry. And uh, for if you have any trade at all uh, in the building trade, there is a boom right here and right now. And uh, with this uh, new Prime Minister that we have, only been there for 12 months, he's opened the doors to all kinds of uh, immigration. If you've got a trade, you can come here and, and work, and there's plenty of work for those who are skilled. And so there's a, a little bit of re reports, and some of it good, and some of it not so good, but we are still the most blessed and luckiest country in the whole world and uh, I'm just glad to be alive, glad to be an Australian and we could be born in another part of the world and uh, we wouldn't be probably so glad and happy that we are. Um, we pray for Israel, we pray Lord God that you 
All your promises are yea and amen. And we thank you, Father God, that the, the peace would come to Jerusalem. The peace would come to Israel and uh, bring a divine order into that part of the world because the rest of the world looks at you. And uh, we are praying for you. And we don't know how to pray as we ought. So therefore, as a Pentecostal, we pray in the Holy Ghost. And um, the Lord quickens our mind to open up our minds and our hearts to the power of the Holy Spirit and to the voice of God. Without any further ado, this is going to be a quick today because we have another appointment. And so without any further ado, I'm going to ask my son to come forth and um, he's going to read out of one book and then promote a different book. How about that? Uh, Will be a horse for God and then sons of God. And so this is my son, Joshua. Hello, my name is Joshua Brian Richards. I'm going to be reading you a little synopsis on Will You Be a Horse for God, Volume 2. You can buy this book at RevBrian1.com. Um, I'll read to you. This book, with a double warning, Proverbs 21.31, A Horse Prepared for Battle. This book will change your life forever if you will start to think like Jesus and feel like you will never be alone again. As the Bible comes alive with clarity of doctrines, you start to live a life of victory in faithfulness, vision, and fruitfulness, and hope of the soon coming of the Lord Jesus Christ appearing in the saints. Rev. Brian, a former pastor of Christian Outreach Centre, Hobart, presently registered as Word of Faith Ministries International Australia, has been used by God to pioneer over 100 churches throughout the, e the whole of Asia Minor. You can buy this book at RevBrian1.com or DivineConnectionsOfChrist.com I'll be reading from Sons of God um, from pages 31 to 33. Remember to like, comment, subscribe if you're on Vimeo, Daily Motion, or YouTube. Okay. Living in prophecy and not knowing it. Luke 23, 7. And as soon as he knew that he belonged unto Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself was at Jerusalem at the time. One of the amazing things about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ is how much prophecy was being fulfilled, yet they could not see it. One of those instances was in the verse above, when Jesus was being tried by Pilate. It was said that Jesus was a Galilean. That area was ruled by Herod, and Pilate's thought was that he could dump this on Herod to politically save himself. It just so happened that Herod was in Jerusalem at the time. Why this is so important is because if Herod had not been in Jerusalem, then Jesus would not have died during the time of the Passover, which have, would have gone against the scriptures. They were living in prophecy and didn't even know it. What is sad is how often people are living in prophecy and can't see it. The prodigal son lived in prophecy. That sin's pleasure is only for a season, and he never saw it. Belshazzar lived in prophecy by rebelling against the word of God and never saw it. Peter lived in prophecy when he denied Jesus three times and never saw it. Samson lived in prophecy when the Delilah was uh, continually trying to find the source of his strength and he couldn't see it. We could go on and on telling of people in the scriptures who were told that something was going to happen if they went down a certain path, but they never saw it. Sadly, people today make the same mistakes. They think they are the exception to scriptures, but they are not. People are told they will destroy their lives if they make a certain decision, but their stubbornness blinds them to the fact that they are living a prophecy as they head down a destructive path. People oftentimes know that immorality destroys lives, but they think they are the exception and head down the road of prophecy and never see the eminent destruction. There are some things you can do to avoid this. First, never think you will be the exception to God's word. If God's word says that something will lead to destruction, then you would be wise to avoid that path. Many people have fulfilled the prophecy of God's word concerning sin, and never saw it because they thought they were the exception. Second, listen to people who are telling you that you are headed down a wrong path. We become deafened by our own pride and desires, 
and can't see that we are living in prophecy. When someone tells you that you are headed towards destruction, listen to the, what they are saying and change your ways. When someone tells you that if you make a certain decision that it will hurt you, then you would be wise not to fulfill their prophecy and avoid that decision. Don't live in the prophecy of someone's caution because you are too proud to admit that you could be right. Let, let me ask you, are you living in prophecy and can't see it? You, all mu you must always remember that there is a price to sin. You are not the exception. Sin has a way of blinding you to the fact that you are living in the prophecy of what sin, sin does to you. If you will keep a tender heart and listen when someone warns you, you will find that you will not become the fulfillment of someone's prophecy. Set your pride aside and listen because sin's prophecy of destruction has never been wrong. Mama now come up from. The scripture for today is in John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we are able to worship you with spirit and truth. Lord, help us that we honor you. Your all praises belongs to you, Lord, and thank you for everything that you have done to us. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us worship one way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I lay my life down at your feet. You're the only one I need. I turn to you, and you are always there. Oh, yeah. 
con la famiglia di otto I shall rescue you and you will honor me con la famiglia di otto especially Christian. Itong mga Kristuhanong pamilya, dili niya. Mauunin siya ay kadaghanan, most of the Christian, this is one of the memory verse. This is my one of my favorite memory verse that John 14.6 I am the way, Jesus said. I, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yeah? And then, but what did saying really mean? for the disciples, for his disciples, and what that it means for us. Kung sa may buktasabot ka nato niya, ang ginoo maoy may paagi, pamaagi sa kamatukuran sa atong kinabuhi. And Jesus said to his disciples, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back, take you to be with me, that you may be where I am. And Thomas said to the Lord, Lord, we don't know where we go in. So how can we know that way? How can we know where you're going? And Jesus answered said to the, his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's just like us. Before we are going to start our journey, <coughs> when you have a long trip to go to Brisbane or to go to Melbourne or Canberra, or anywhere long trip, you want to turn on in your GPS, you know, GPS, uh, most everybody knows about GPS of map in Google. You map in Google in GPS. Many of you are familiar of this, what are I'm talking about. If you can see in your destination, you look up, look, you look at how many hours it takes your destination. You know, when, uh, when we put our Google map, in, we go to Canberra, it takes for about two hours and a half to travel. Is that right, maybe? Canberra. We took uh, two hours travel going to Canberra, and that was my first time. And then when we put that in uh, in GPS, Google Map, it's really work. You know, we, we went, we we arrived there exactly the time, how much the, that it takes a time to two half and an hours from in Sydney going to Canberra, just like that, you know, how many hours it takes your destination, your journey, that Thomas was lo looking for the same kind of information, you know, sometimes we depend on our Google map, so far excellent GPS, I observed that we, we cannot make, make mistake with Google, it's very powerful GPS Google map, and we have this is to give us a right destination. We will tell you if you are in wrong way, if you are in, in, in and you have to return back if you are a wrong way. It's a really perfect, a miracle uh, GPS Google. And that's God give that, that knowledge that you, the one who, who invented that, that's from the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is giving us a better way to live our lives to Him. He is showing us that through following Him every day in life, every day by faith, He will lead us wherever we go. He is rescuer in times of trouble. He is provider. He, he never ever changed. He's still the same today and forever. 
just like a GPS, you know. If 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 you if you if your ways, if you whatever you ways, whatever you plan, acknowledge Jesus and He will direct your path. It's just like GPS. You you acknowledge Jesus. You delight Him. You you honor Him and you will He will direct your path. You can get to get your right destination like your Google Map. And remember this, He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except Him. So thank you for all the viewers in YouTube to always continue to support our ministry. And God bless you. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Amen. This channel all too much. Okay. Our wisdom for today would be to follow what Jesus says, even when sometimes we don't understand. And in the midst of all kinds of trouble, you can seek a word from God that will give you peace and understanding. And when Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, no man goes to the Father except through me, he also said to his disciples, well, who do men say that I am then? You know, what's, what's behind my back and things like that, he'd like to know what, what they are receiving. I mean, he knows all things, but he wants to know what they are receiving from the gossip that is going on. You see, and so there'll always be gossipers, there'll always be backbiters, and there'll always be some angry people that don't even know what they're angry at. And if you go the ways of the world and keep company with the angry man, you become just like him. However, um, an angry man can be tamed when they love Jesus. You know what I mean? We get angry, we all get angry, even Jesus got angry at a time um, when he should have been uh, when he should have been telling them maybe uh, his wisdom but his wisdom at the time I think he, he, he lost his patience with people and uh, he whipped them. He actually made a whip and uh, and whipped them and, and told them to get out of the, the Lord's house that they are polluted with all their sales pitches, you know. And there's some churches like that even today that, you know, they're too busy selling stuff to raise money for their projects. They're too busy. I mean, I've visited some churches and they they got that many projects going on that there's no room for the wisdom of God. There's no room for the plan of God. They're too busy trying to raise money for their projects or for their vision or plan or purpose of what they think the church should be doing. If the church is not preaching the word of God, get out there and get out, get into a church that is really preaching the word of God. So. Jesus said, who do men say that I am? You know, he is a man who is, Jesus was a, uh, not only the son of God, he said, within me is the father, you know. He said to Philip, have I been with you so long that you're not known who I am, you see. And uh, that came much later, of course, after he was, crucified and rose again from the dead, walked through the wall. Um, but, I mean, they did ask some silly questions that they should have known. And one of the questions was, what does, what, who did they say that I am? And some say, you, John the Baptist come back to life. I mean, John the Baptist lost his head in the while he was in jail. And uh, he wasn't coming back. But the spirit of John the Baptist could have been in Jesus. It wasn't, but it could have been. And uh, 
They say, well, why do the people say that I'm John the Baptist or Elijah or one of the prophets? Why do they say that? They say that the Spirit, and it says in the in the in the Old Testament, which is the first five books of the Bible, that's all they had at that time. This New Testament is for us, you know, to to exhort us. And so why would they say that John the Baptist or one of the prophets is because in the first five books of the Bible which we call the Pentateuch it actually talks about Elijah or the spirit of Elijah coming back again before the Saviour is revealed and so it will be in the last days it says in Matthew as it is in, so shall it be in the last days as it was in the days uh, of Sado Gomorrah as it was in the days of, of, and you'll read it for yourself, Matthew 24. And so, that he, he, so they said to Jesus, they're saying that you can't be the Messiah because the Messiah can't come until Elijah comes back again. So he said, well, Elijah did come back, but you never recognised him. I said, well, you know, the greatest one in the kingdom of God was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah in him, and Elijah did come from the form of John the Baptist. So Jesus, according to the prophecy, Jesus couldn't come until Elijah came first. Elijah did come, but you recognised him not. That's what it when he said that, they looked at each other and they said, must be talking about John the Baptist. Yes. So Elijah did come in the form of John the Baptist, then Jesus comes, and so shall it be in the last days. That when, you know, Jesus took them up to uh, up the mountain and, it, and it said to Peter, James and John, who was the, the, uh, the leaders of the twelve uh, that was chosen. Peter, James and John went with him up the hill there. Uh, it says in Peter that he went to the what we commonly call Mount Transfiguration. We call it that because there's no other uh, name mentioned. So we call it Mount Transfiguration. And he went up to that mountain and appeared with him. On one side was Moses, on the other side was Elijah. And uh, they recognised that this is Moses and Elijah, those prophesied in, in, the, in the Bible. And uh, so they knew that. And so there were three standing there, Jesus in the middle and, and Moses and Elijah on, on the side. Now, in the last days, Jesus, before Jesus can come, Elijah must come again. And the spirit, we're talking about the spirit of Elijah coming in the form, it came in the form of a man before, John the Baptist. But this time I believe the spirit of Elijah is going to come in the church, in the form of a church. And so does Moses come in the form of a church. So when Moses and Elijah will appear soon in the churches and you will know you will know that this is of a, a different caliber, a different spirit, a different uh, understanding. And, and you will know that this is the leadership of the, the apostolic prophet anointing. And you will all know, you, I hope you're listening there in India and in Africa and the places that are on our mailing list, that... Moses and Elijah are coming back in the form of the church. And the church is being transformed now. Uh, but we must be ready for it. And in, in uh, where does it say, Proverbs 21, 31, it says, will you be a horse for God? You see, we talk about it in that, in that book, will you be a horse for God? And uh, also, we talk about things like in Proverbs 23, uh, 
as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We have to get our heart right with the right thinking and uh, it will happen. Why don't we see the miracles, signs and wonders that we see through the book of Acts? We will see again because the only thing that's stopping that is because we are educated now in the world and we're expecting to see uh, miracles without any efforts on our side, without any work on our We have to work on ourselves. We don't have to work the miracles. We'll never do that. Not like Jesus did. But we can believe for miracles the same as Jesus did. And if Jesus is still the one doing the miracles. We haven't got a special gift of working of miracles. We, if God has used us that way, then we're just the vessel. We're the part of, he's the part of, we're the clay, okay? And it'll never change. You'll never become the man who's doing the miracles. Jesus is always the one doing the miracles. And you couldn't say that you got a, a gift in this and a gift in that, and you'll be, you'll be sorry that you said that because one day it won't work for you because you be thinking that you're doing the work. You're doing the works for Jesus, but you're not doing the works. Jesus is the one who does the works always. And we are the one that yield our members to him. And therefore we will see miracles, signs and wonders following the preaching of the word again. Amen. So, who do men say I am? Some say Elijah or one of the prophets. Who do you say I am? And it's important today, who do you say Jesus is? And uh, he said that I and the Father are one. You know, Philip says, show us the Father, it will be sufficient of us. He says, have I been so long with you that you've not known who I am? You see? And so, we have to know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. What he was doing years ago, he'll do again. For you, and for me. But he's the one who does it. We don't do it. We, we, we're the vessel. We're the vessel. He's the potter. We are the clay. For those who want to receive Jesus, and uh, have a better understanding today because of what I've said, I want you to receive Jesus all over again. And, you know, it's only pride that would stop you from saying this prayer today. I want you to present your body to God as a living sacrifice. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed as you renew your mind with the Word of God. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Jesus died for me. I believe Jesus died for me. On the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary. I believe that he rose again from the dead. I believe you that Jesus rose again from the dead. That Jesus rose again from the dead. I ask you to be my Lord. I ask you to be my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And make me born again. And make me born again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' I pray. name. Now, if you, if you said that prayer for the first time, we'd love to hear from you. So we can send you one of our books. Uh, you know, Sons of God. Will you be a horse for God? But this one is my specialty. Are you in Christ? Now, Christ is not Jesus' second name. Christ means the anointing of Jesus. Are you in that anointing? Means, are you in Christ? Are you in that anointing? And uh, this book will lead you from being a, a, a novice to the eldership to being a leader. And uh, for those people that are on our mailing list and have been following me, the videos. We'll give you a certificate of recognition, a certificate to say that you study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto men, unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We'll give you that certificate that you can present to your government and get 
the registration. We'll do everything we can to help you become an ordained minister and get out there in the world and lead people to Christ because the time is short. Hallelujah. My wife is going to finish it up now and uh, we'll see you again next week.